Alrighty, hi guys and welcome to another round of video notes. We have just a few slides to go over today before you're going to be able to then use this information to complete your worksheet. So today we're going to be following traits through families and generations and one of the best ways to follow traits is through pedigree trees. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like here. So a pedigree tree is essentially just a table of However many generations you're wanting to study, it can be two, it can be three, it can be five, ten, and in these generations you will identify one trait that you're following from each generation to generation. And you can see in this key here the shape and the color of the different icons indicate different parts of information. So according to our specific key for this pedigree tree, Males are shown with squares, and females are shown with circles. Also important to note is the color. So in this key, red shows that those individuals do have the trait, while blue shows that the individuals do not have the trait. So red is showing the effect of that trait in your phenotype, meanwhile unaffected, blue, says that the trait is not reflected in their phenotype. So in this instance, our male parent and our female parent have come together to have children and then we are also keeping track of some of their children. So the male parent is affected by the trait while the female parent is not. If we look at their children, their first male child is affected by the trait, the second male child is not, their female child is affected by the trait, while this female child is not, and this female child is. So of their one, two, three, four, five children, three of them have the trait, while two do not. So then if we look here at the next generation, when the affected male is then with a unaffected female, their offspring, are half and half. One is an affected female, the other is an uninfected male. The next generation we have two unaffected individuals. All of their children are unaffected. This individual didn't have any offspring, neither did this one. And then finally we see here the female was affected while the male was not and half of their children had the trait while the other half did not. So male had this male did not, this female did, this female did not. So there's quite a few different traits that we can look at in our families and this is what you'll be doing for the last part of your activity today is you'll be looking for one of these traits in your family and then be creating a pedigree tree for them. So like I recommend on the worksheet, it's best to use a trait that you see some of your family members have and some of them don't, then that way you can try to follow genotypes a little bit better. If everyone has it, well then it's just a matter of everybody's affected by it, right? So for example, if everyone in your family has a cleft chin, you probably don't want to use that one. But if maybe your dad and your brother have a cleft chin but your mom and your sister don't, well then great. And you can go through as many generations as you'd like at least go to your grandparents if you can, or maybe your parents' siblings if they have any. Everybody's family is different. Everybody has a different number of siblings, parents, etc. But um, just in general, try to follow through at least three generations looking at different traits. So let's go through some of these different dominant and recessive traits. So remember, if you are dominant, then that means that you have at least one dominant allele in your genotype. If you're recessive, that means that you have to have two recessive alleles in your genotype. Dominance always going to be shown if it's present. Recessive needs to have two present. There cannot be a dominant in the genotype for a recessive trait to show. Kind of goes back to that whole dominant traits are like Sharpies, recessive traits are like pencil. If there's a Sharpie present, well, all you're going to see is the Sharpie. Okay, so let's look at these ones. So cleft chin kind of looks like somebody had put their fingerprint um, right in the middle of your chin. Um, Superman is pretty well known for having a cleft chin. 
widow's peak is essentially saying that the hair at the top of your hairline is pointed versus no widow's peak is more rounded. Dimples are if you smile, it looks like somebody's put two fingers into the sides of your cheeks versus no dimples. Brown or black hair versus blonde hair. It's pretty self-explanatory. Having freckles versus not having freckles. Brown eyes is dominant to gray or blue eyes. Um, this is what's known as a free earlobe, where there's a little bit of space hanging between the bottom of your earlobe and your cheek. It kind of goes up and down. An attached earlobe just immediately moves straight to your jawline and down. And then finally, there's what's known as a hitchhiker's thumb or a regular thumb. So a regular thumb, if you put your thumb up, it's just going to go straight. Hitchhiker's thumb, your thumb will bend backwards a little bit. Okay, so now let's look at this pedigree chart. Here, I decided that we were going to follow the trait for eye color. So our affected individuals are going to all have blue eyes, while our unaffected individuals will have brown eyes. So now let's label all of our affective individuals and unaffected individuals with their traits. So all of my red individuals are gonna have blue eyes. So you can see I've labeled all of my affected individuals with blue eyes. And all of my blue individuals, they're gonna have brown eyes because they're not affected. So you can see how I've got all of those labeled. So now that I have all of my blue eyes established, I know that blue eyes are recessive. So that means that I can write it as two lowercase b's because remember with a recessive trait the genotype is always going to be two recessive alleles blue eyes is a recessive trait so the genotype is going to be recessive as well so you can see here i filled that in for all of my blue-eyed individuals and this is where recessive traits are really really helpful when it comes to completing pedigree charts Recessive traits, because they have to have two recessive alleles, make it really easy to know then what the genotype is going to be. For dominant traits, we don't know if they're going to be homozygous dominant or if they'll be heterozygous. And the best way that we can know is by looking at the offspring that they pass on. Punnett squares can also be used while you're figuring this out to see what genotype for a dominant trait would then result in having their um, offspring's genotypes and phenotypes. So for most of these, we can see in the pairings that the offspring have blue eyes, which means that we can assume that at least for the individuals that have recessive traits shown in the phenotype of their offspring, we can assume that then the genotype for the brown-eyed individuals has to be heterozygous. And so I fill that in here. And the reason that we can assume that is because they have to pass on one of their recessive alleles in order for their offspring to also have then two recessive alleles. If this genotype here were two dominant alleles for brown eyes, well then, if you were to complete your Punnett square, all of the resulting offspring would be heterozygous, which means they would have one uh, dominant allele and one recessive allele. And if all of their offspring were heterozygous, then all of the offspring would have brown eyes. But obviously that's not what we see here. What we see instead is that some of the offspring have brown eyes, but some of the offspring have blue eyes. So that tells us that this individual here, this parent, has to be heterozygous because that's the only way that they're going to be able to pass on recessive alleles and see the recessive phenotype in their offspring. So I filled in all of that here. So like I said, we can assume that this individual is heterozygous. This is homozygous recessive. So if we look at then the offspring of each of these generations, we can then say, okay, if this individual and this individual had one offspring with blue eyes and one offspring with brown eyes, then that tells me this individual also has to be heterozygous. This individual has to be heterozygous because they are an offspring of these two parents. There's no way that this individual could be homozygous 
dominant because of the fact that they are the offspring of these two individuals. This individual will never pass on to homozygous dominant alleles because it only has one. This individual has two recessive alleles. And this individual has one recessive allele and one dominant allele. And it will only be able to pass on one dominant allele while this individual then pass on one recessive allele. Does that make sense? That's why this offspring cannot be homozygous dominant. It can only be heterozygous or homozygous recessive. So then looking here at this next individual, this individual is heterozygous. And then looking here, these individuals also have blue eyes in their offspring. So we can assume that then this individual has to be heterozygous as well for the same exact reason that this one is and the same reason that this one is. And then same reason for all of their offspring. Blue eyes means they're going to be homozygous recessive. Brown eyes is going to be heterozygous because of the fact that their parents heterozygous over here as well. Brown eyes has to be heterozygous because their parent is heterozygous and blue eyes is homozygous because you have to be homozygous to show the trait. So those are all the ones that we can complete based off of the information that we know regarding how traits are passed on. Now the thing is, this little family here. We cannot know exactly what genotype this individual has because all of their offspring have brown eyes. So these offspring could all be heterozygous or they might be homozygous dominant. If this individual is homozygous dominant, then they would be able to pass on two, one from this individual, one from this individual, dominant alleles. So as we have learned now, the best way to figure out the genotype for certain individuals is to continue to study their offspring. So what I have labeled here is the possible genotypes for these individuals. They could be either homozygous dominant or heterozygous because of the fact that we don't see any blue eyes in their offspring, right? So let's say that I just happen to know that this individual is homozygous dominant, in fact. Let's just say that that information was provided for me. This individual knew, hey, I'm homozygous dominant, and we already knew that this one was heterozygous. So if you're confused where this Punnett square suddenly came from, this is this family here, and then we're just going to continue to study their offspring. So these are those two individuals right here. And then these are these three individuals here. So if we look here, we're going to study then the offspring of these kids so that we can try and figure out what their genotype is. So in this pair, we saw that when this individual was paired with a blue-eyed individual, well, we know that this has to be homozygous recessive. Looking at their offspring, we can see some individuals have blue eyes and some have brown eyes. So, go ahead and make your guess right now. Do you think that, are they homozygous dominant or are they heterozygous? And if you said heterozygous, then you are correct because if they have individuals that are homozygous recessive, well, then they had to be able to pass on at least one recessive allele. So they had to be heterozygous. Same with this individual over here. If their offspring had at least one individual showing the recessive phenotype, well then you know that they are going to have to have had one recessive allele passed from one parent. And based off of that, we can also assume that this individual is going to be heterozygous because if we get one allele from each parent, well, we can get one recessive allele, but we'll need to get the other from this parent. So that tells us that this one is also or heterozygous. So what I did here is I filled in all of the ones that we knew off the top of our head. So once again, recessive traits, blue eyes is so helpful when it comes to completing pedigree charts or family trees, because you know what the genotype is going to be. If you have a recessive individual, you know that the genotype is going to be 
two recessive alleles. And then, like I said, based off of the information that we got from the offspring, we can then tell what these genotypes are. So for this individual, we know they have to be heterozygous because they had some recessive offspring. And so because of that, if we get one allele from each parent, well, this one has brown eyes. So we know they get one dominant allele, but they can only get one. There's not a second one to be passed on from this parent. So it's going to be heterozygous. Same here. These two individuals have to be heterozygous because of the fact that one of their offspring has blue eyes. So you get one recessive allele from this individual, one recessive allele from this individual. Now for this one, just like this one, we can't know for sure what their genotype is because they might have gotten two dominant alleles or they could have gotten one dominant and one recessive allele. Obviously, they didn't get two recessive alleles, otherwise they would have blue eyes. But we can't know if they have homozygous dominant or heterozygous. Same with this one. And, of course, the way to find out, once again, is to then look to see what their offspring looks like and continue doing that until you're able to figure out all the information that you need. But we're not going to go through <laughs> that many generations. Um, this is just more so an example for you guys on how to figure out a pedigree chart, how to follow traits through a family, and this is really helpful um, when you're using Punnett squares as well to show you all of the possible uh, different offspring genotypes and phenotypes that could be passed on. So if you're ever confused in terms of completing this table and trying to figure out, okay, what is the possible genotype that this individual could have to have offspring that look like this? or vice versa. If I have these two individuals, what are all of the possible genotypes for their offspring? That's where Punnett squares are really going to come in handy when you're completing these pedigree charts. So if you have any questions at all, please, please, please let me know. I want to be able to help support you guys as you work through this activity. I think that they're so much fun, especially once you start to understand what you're actually following in these tables here. And in using it with your actual family, it'll give you information about the traits that were passed on from your grandparents to your parents and to then to you. So once again, if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing what you guys submit on that worksheet. Thank you.